All right. This is what your last will and testament is, okay? When you're doing a will, you're writing a letter to the government, the probate judge, and you're asking the probate judge to read this letter upon death. And you're telling the judge property that you own at death, you're telling the judge how you want to process it and have her or she, him administer your property. Who to distribute it to? Typically to your spouse, to your kids, to family, uh, the Humane Society or the Red Cross. All right. Now, it is a letter to probate judge. I'll read this for those who have diminished uh, vision. It tells the judge how you want the probate court to distribute your property you own upon death. It is made public upon death and filed with court. It sleeps but awakens at your death. It involves government, the judiciary, the probate court. We are excluding in this discussion your ethical will about moral treasures, ideals, and aspirations. It's one of the basic estate planning tools, will and power of attorney, a couple of the basic tools. This came up uh, in the last seven days, and I wanted to address the need needs of a subscriber who's uh, struggling with cancer. And uh, so I promised to put something up there. Keep that individual in your thoughts and prayers. So again, and when you're going through chemo, uh, know that uh, it's not a fatal disease. Uh, I've had my own family where they've, they've survived. So it's not, you don't have an expiration stamp on your foot. But you're gonna be a little foggy and you gotta hear this. So I do this tape so that you can listen to it over and over again, what your will is. Should you have a will? I think you should, but it it's, think of it as not your main tool you want to rely upon. And I, I mostly represent little fish against big fish. So if you like government, then, you know, uh, I'm, I'm analyzing it such that most people don't want government in their lives. So your will is pushing you towards the probate court, the judiciary, the government. But it's a safety net. There are other ways, and that's the analysis. There are other ways to work with your particular problems on how to pass property to the next generation. So it's a lot like a violin. You can pour sand in the violin and prop open a door, pour sand in the violin, prop the door closed. A violin full of sand is a very good doorstop, but it's, the poor, it's a very poor use of the violin. So I want you to think of this will as that violin and you want to learn to play it because if it's, there's a use for the will and hopefully it will never have to be used, but it's there to catch matters that cannot pass outside of probate by what we call operational law, which is beyond what I'm talking about here. I just want to talk about the will and I'm talking to people who may have brain fog, people who are struggling uh, with the concept, but have all their competency, their capacity, and uh, are thinking that they need a will. You know, in Michigan, you're allowed to do a will in your own handwriting, uh, and you sign it and date it, but don't put anything below your handwriting. Uh, if you do, there's different requirements, and I'm not going to go into it right now. This is just basic will. If you're outside the United States or you're in a territory, you should Google what, you know, what are the requirements, the formalities for a will and know that and they can change. This is to instruct you on how to walk it and talk it with your lawyer. And in the United States, we have what we call the Legal Services Administration. There's one in Michigan, Legal Services of Eastern Michigan, and you're allowed to consult them and discuss your will and I think they have free wills. And I think there's plenty of, uh, the, the document itself is, is important, but what I'm finding out, and I've been asked this over and over again, is people uh, want, individuals want the confidence of 
Am I doing the right thing? Is this what I need? And, uh, and then I'm in the position to say, yeah, but, yeah, you need the will, but hopefully we'll never use it, okay? So, uh, and then I'll have to get into that a little. I can talk about it here, but I don't want to. I want to get this very basic one concept. What is your will? And the, and what I'm trying to do is rebut the idea that your will, you write it up, and then somehow magically, without government involvement, things get done. You know, I want my house to go to uh, this person. I want the car to go to this person. I want the cabin up north. No, uh, if you own property and you write that will out, uh, that's not where it ends. That will has to be administered in probate. And that whole probate process, I guess I could go through. I've never had a lot of questions about it, but it's this confusion about the will. So I set this up so that in the first 60 seconds, I could do a short and then try to refer the short over to the, the long here. And I am not happy with... Uh, the way I've done this, I I, th I feel that I've never satisfied that I've exhausted this concept, or I've never satisfied that I can that I've done it perfectly. So I think I just have to start talking about the will more and more. And this is set up so that not that you that I do your will. It's set up so that you know the working concepts of what a will is in the United States in Michigan, and you can take those concepts and articulate them with a lawyer and say, you know, do I need a will? I think the answer could be yes. How do I do the will? Can I do my own? What are the formalities? Do I need a signature? Can it be typed up? Does it have to be my handwriting? Do I need a date? Do I need a notary? How many witnesses do I need? If I need witnesses. And those wills are like, remember Baskin Robbins ice cream? There's like 31 flavors. There's different types of wills. So, you know, you just keep it simple and say, listen, I just want a simple will. And uh, how can I do that? And it's okay. You're not cheating by talking to more than one attorney. And you're not cheating by saying, hey, is it possible to get a free will? Where do I get a free will? You know, and what are what's the good, the bad, and the ugly of a free will? And uh, my advice is to go to legal services uh, here in Michigan or Eastern Michigan and have a consult so that you have not just the will itself, but it is in a nest of good informed advice so that your violin doesn't fill up with sand and it's used as a doorstop to prop the door open or closed, okay? I hope that's helpful. I'm not doing this just to hear myself speak. So uh, I can't always read all of the uh, comments, but if you have specific comments, specific criticisms, or you want to know something more, put it in the comment section and I've got some people that are, that are watching that and we'll try to, to fix that. Try to get what you need. Maybe we do a live session where people can ask. The problem with the lawyer is I got people that are Americans that are outside the United States, people all over the, the world, and uh, everybody has different needs. So you start with your own need. And it can get confusing, number one. Two, people have confidentiality. So, you know, people are who are in stress, you know, like man overboard, when they're drowning and they've got a cancer diagnosis, they tend to talk about private matters publicly. So you have to anticipate and protect people from themselves. So I have to be careful how I do that. And third, uh, many, uh, it's just, uh, there are regulations on what, what we can talk about, what we can't talk about uh, publicly. So we'll work through it all.